With uh, hope, aspiration, and a lot of political goodwill. I think uh, the key challenge is this. We've got countries uh, which are being problematic at the regulatory level. What you're going to need to see is companies within those countries adopting informal uh, carbon pricing disciplines. We're starting to see this right across the world, whether companies are required to or whether they're not. We see it in the United States, we see it in Australia, we see it in all sorts of countries, irrespective of whether those countries happen to have a formal uh, carbon uh, tr uh, price system in place. So I think that's number one. Number two, where we've got carbon pricing systems in place, we actually need to bring in effective prices which bring about behavioural change. So it's both increasing the coverage of uh, carbon pricing regimes and increasing their effectiveness. That's the way forward. Well, financial sector is critical because uh, the financial sector uh, are those who invest in firms right across the world, particularly the pension funds, but others as well. And so when you've got major global pension funds representing hundreds of billions of dollars of assets uh, through their shareholders, through their policy holders, saying to their management, we wish you only to invest in companies which are either adopting internal carbon pricing disciplines or are formally part of cap and trade schemes themselves, that will change corporate behaviour in terms of energy intensive industries, uh, in terms of chemicals, in terms of cement, in terms of uh, energy. Uh, that therefore I think is where the financial sector plays a huge role. Right across Asia at the moment, carbon pricing is very um, uh, much in its infancy. Uh, we've had um, progress and regress in my own country, Australia. Um, but more importantly, in terms of carbon footprint, we look at China, where after years of study, frankly going back about a decade, the Chinese within the next 12 months uh, will be putting in place their initial, albeit limited, national carbon pricing scheme that will expand in its scope later on. So we need to work with our Chinese friends to encourage them to do that. Secondly, what we're doing at the Asia Society Policy Institute is policy work on how in the future you could link a Chinese national emissions trading scheme with one in Korea and with one in Japan, thereby creating a Northeast Asian carbon market which will represent 20% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That would be progress.